Welcome everyone. I'm Elizabeth Ryder. I'm here with my friend and mentor, Marie Forleo. Hi, Marie. Hi. Hi Marie Maria. is host of Marie TV, as most people know. She is founder of Beast School and most recently the New York Times bestselling author of This Beauty, Everything is Figure Out a Bull. I this is actually the galley. It's like so marked up and like tattered because I loved it so much. And Marie, you know this. We were actually book sisters. We were writing our books at the same time. And Marie gave me a great quote for the front of my book, which I loved, but it was so funny when my publisher was telling me I could like pick weeks when it would come out. Yeah. You mentioned when everything is figure outable was coming out, even though we have different publishers. Yeah. Like not the same week as Marie Forleo's. Even though <laughs> it's completely different topics, I think everyone would be like, not that week. <laughs> You're so sweet. I we because we have so many friends in the industry that are authors, we had it was like such a dance of me like calling, like going like, okay, when's your week? Okay, when's your week? Okay, good. So that we could stagger. But it was so good. Uh, it was so fun. And I have to tell you the best story about this book. Uh, my mom sent me a text and she said, oh, so I'm from Billings, Montana. The airport is all of eight gates and one small gift shop. And she sent me a text. Uh, this is back in like November. She said, oh, I saw your friend, the one you do business with every year at the airport. And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, that could be a lot of people, you know, who was it? She goes, oh, I can't remember her name. And she sent me a text of this book in the tiny gift shop in the tiny airport. And I just, I, it made me so happy to see it. I love, 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 love what you've done with it. It's been amazing. Oh, thank you so much. It was a labor of love. I am excited to keep spreading the word of everything is figure outable because it relates so much, especially when we're growing our business, right? There's so many different stages, stages from right. everything is figure outable, including I can start this business. business. Everything is figure outable, including I can grow it. I can grow my team. You know, every different level, we can use this philosophy to help ourselves stay in motion. Yeah. So I have a, a kind of serious but fun topic I want to talk about with you because yeah. we only get a little bit of time with you every year. So I really want to take advantage of it. And that is the topic of self-sabotage because we give people so much information over the year and especially in the month leading up to B-School, right? Like every logistical piece, uh, you know, we can answer every question, the FAQ, but really, I think what it comes down to oftentimes is, is more mindset yes. and understanding, you know, kind of what's going on in here. And when we're making certain decisions that we think are benefiting us, how are we actually sabotaging ourselves? And something really interesting happened last week. And I want to know how you'd respond to this. A friend of mine who works for a big company, one of the most successful companies in the world, she's got a great job there, but she's kind of thought about going off on her own and starting a blog and an online business, you know, dabbling. Uh, she has a master's degree. She's wildly intelligent, personable, like every characteristic of a woman who I would think would just like snap her fingers and make it happen. And she said something really interesting to me. She was talking about my blog and she goes, well, yeah, Liz, you know, I mean, don't you think it's just because you started at the right time? She was like, I know you're smart. Like you can make things happen, mm -hmm. but don't you think a big part of all of your traffic and everything you've done is just about when you started? And I was really taken back by that because she's, you know, someone who I respect so much and she's so intelligent. And I just thought, well, you know, that's just an excuse to, to tell yourself that it couldn't happen right now. Of course you could create the same thing. If you started right now, you just have to start now so that in five or 10 years you have all of that traffic, but it has nothing to do about when I started. So that's kind of the, it's too late. Yes. And I think you were really wise to call it what it is. And by the way, all of us have these ideas and we will continue to have these ideas. They show up in our mental theaters. Um, it's too late for me because I didn't start earlier. It's too late for me because I'm too old. It's too late for me because someone has already done the exact thing that I want to do. So again, they can kind of manifest in a number of different ways. Uh, but if you pay attention closely, you realize that that conversation keeps happening and the decades keep passing and you are no longer no closer to the actualization of your business and your dreams. So I've heard this same thing from people in their 20s. I've heard the same thing for people in their 70s. It's the same bullshit again and again and again. And people use it as an opportunity to go, oh, it's not going to work for me. And the people, I will tell you, I've been coaching for two decades now. This yeah. is our 11th year doing B-School. Yeah. And I've uh, had the honor of just being with a lot of different people all around the world and being with people in person who have incredible success. And the one thing that they all have in common is they didn't listen to those things. Some people, mm -hmm. I will be honest, I'll even be like, oh my goodness, 
they're successful almost even despite themselves. They yeah. might not even be the best at what they do, but you know what they have? Complete conviction in themselves. And I respect them for that. Yeah. They take action consistently and I respect them for that. So, you know, that your friend or anyone's friend, right? Yeah. Who can, you can be like, oh, well, I could do that. Oh yeah, well then go do it. Because that is the true test. And it is possible for anyone to get in this game now. Still, there's so much opportunity, but not if you're going to listen to those stories. Yeah, absolutely. It was so interesting when she said that. And then what I started to think was, like you mentioned, this is the 11th year of B-School. I believe, I still can't remember. I, I tried to go back to my emails. I'm trying to figure out. I need to just email Sarah and ask her. I think I've been in, I was in your second or no, I think I was in your third year of B-School. Mm -hmm. So like nine years in for me, but I've been blogging for 12 years. And I told her, I was like, you know, I think it's actually easier for you now to get to where I'm at in a yes. much shorter period of time, because I didn't know what the hell I was doing for. I mean, I still feel that way all the time, by the way. So anybody watching this, like still yeah. feel that way, but like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a strategy. I didn't, I didn't know what page views meant. I didn't know what I didn't know to have a, I didn't even know to have an email opt-in on my website. Like that never dawned on me, right? Like if I would, would have had the tools then when I first started that I, you know, acquired over many years and then finding B-School, yeah, it would have happened a lot faster. Like I was just kind of stumbling for a long time. Also too, I think where we're at right now, I remember when I first started and like my business, it was like crumpled together, like HTML, hard coded, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tools we have now, you know, I was just talking with a dear friend of mine who runs this incredible platform. I can't wait. We'll talk more about it with, um, with B-Schoolers, but literally in a matter of minutes, website, online community, online membership, and online courses. And it's completely affordable. Like we had to build all of this stuff and hobble it together. And so the counter argument is actually like, you know what? If you're ready to do this, the tools are less expensive. They're yeah. more user friendly. Everything is at your fingertips. And what you have to do is develop the capabilities and the belief in yourself, which everyone has such unique gifts to share. It's so possible, but you have to just cross that initial hurdle to say, I am no longer going to think about this. I'm no longer going to assign that, oh, everyone else started ahead of me. It's too late for me. I'm too old. Everyone said it already. And jump in with the rest of us and start creating results. Because I will tell you this, when I think about my life, pre-owning my own business versus my life now 20 years in my goodness am I so grateful every single day I you know I was at a dentist today I was getting my teeth cleaned and I'm walking throughout this office it happened to be in the NYU building and I'm like walking through these cubicles where people are kind of you know sitting and by the way this is not downplaying it's just not for me but you know I saw people in the meetings and I just felt my body like under the fluorescent lights like starting to wither and I had such profound appreciation for the fact that I could go get my teeth clean and I have the rest of my day to do what I wish. Yeah. Complete freedom. I was like, I can, I'm so grateful that younger me was wise enough to start. So everyone listening right now, this is the you that we want to start right now because in a few years, you're going to look back and go like, thank God. I'm so glad I did it. I know. I actually, I went to have lunch with a friend, this was a few years ago now, in an office building that reminded me of my previous corporate job. And I'm not an anxious person, but I really started to like almost have a physiological reaction. And um, we went, when we sat at lunch, I told her, I was like, I think I'm allergic to corporate America. Like I've developed, <laughs> an allergy. I've actually developed an allergy to the <laughs> environment because I don't recall another time where I felt like that. Like it just, you know, and for me too, it was like, it's like the freedom, right? I think I probably work more and harder mm -hmm. in some ways. I have more freedom. So if I don't, if I want to take a Thursday off to go pick up my parents at the airport or to help my sister out with the kids or get my teeth cleaned, whatever I can do that. Uh, I think you'll never work harder for anyone as you would work for yourself for sure. hundred percent. And uh, to, yeah, to be clear, and thank you for, uh, for stating that. And also what we're suggesting is not necessarily easy. It's not like you're like, I'm going to take B-School and then I'm going to open my computer and money's just going to start spitting out. No. Um, but you're going to work hard in life somewhere 
You know what I mean? Or you're just going to kind of show up and, you know, phone it in, which that's not a very satisfying way to pass your days. So if you are interested in both digging into something that is deeply meaningful to you and that has the potential for an upside that's really unlimited. I thought about this today too, Elizabeth, and it's strange. I was having all of these thoughts come to me. I said, my goodness, you know, one of the reasons I stepped away from the corporate world was because I couldn't reconcile that no matter how hard I worked, let's say over six months, my paycheck would never change. Mm. And that I would have to go ask someone to approve a raise for me. And it would be in their hands, like my financial destiny would be in someone else's hands. And it would almost not really be tied to how hard I was working, or I'd have to wait these particular periods in order for me to hopefully get a raise. And the rebel in me was like, oh, hell no, no, like, no, (laughs) no, 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 no. Yeah, absolutely. What do you say? Something came up while you were talking and and this is something that does come up a lot. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, It's all already been done. Like, you know, you know, I want to be a health coach or a recipe blogger or a digestive assistant coach or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, or a business coach, any of it. Yes. But she's doing it so much better, or she started five years ago, so she already has, you know. The market cornered. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this because this is really important. Also, this is really a universal fear. It's tied to the deeper fear that I am not good enough, that what mm. I have to say is not valuable. So this fear that it's all been done before, that on the surface feels like, but wait, I see her, 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 and her, him, him, her, and her. But if we peel away underneath, it's like, I am not good enough to stand in that circle and people won't find what I have to say valuable or unique or original. Quick story. So when Josh and I first got together uh, about 17 years ago, we just celebrated our 17th Yay, year anniversary. I know, I just saw that. Congratulations. Thank you. I was at the baby stages of my business. And at that particular point in my life, I was really, really stressed. I was hustling really hard. And I was just um, in the midst of bad habits that I had developed throughout my teenage and college years, which included eating a lot of macaroni and cheese out of a box, Chef Boyer D out of a can, like anything in bags and cans and boxes. It was all processed food. Josh very kindly would say, you know, why don't you start taking these supplements? Or he would say, I think we should get a juicer. And um, how about this salad introducing me to vegetables? And I was like, what are you talking about? I don't have time for that. I'm working like 16 jobs. I'm trying to get this thing off the ground. I want my pizza. I want my mac and cheese. Like it's too expensive. Uh, Right. That was my response to all of his love. Mm -hmm. Cut forward, maybe a couple of years, like two or three years. I meet uh, my best friend, Chris Carr, who happens to be in the wellness space. And uh, Chris, of course, you know, introducing me to superfoods and here's a green juice and here's all these supplements and probiotics. So I come home one day and I'm like, Josh, I met the most amazing woman. Her name's Chris. She wrote all these New York Times bestselling books. Here's the juicer we should get. We should, you know, we should get these vitamins. Here's the salad. Look at this recipe for dressing. You know, we should have been doing this for years. And Josh rightfully looks at me like, I've been telling you the exact same thing for years. Why couldn't you hear it from me? And that's the point. Sometimes it takes that one person speaking a message, making an offer, sharing a possibility from their unique point of view, from their voice in a particular time, in a particular way for it to land with someone. And I'm an intelligent person. I'm not an ignorant person, but it had to come from Chris in order for it to land. Now, is Chris the only one who talks about, no, there are, and so many of us, right, need to transform our health, but that's the point. You know, think about if Oprah said to herself when she was thinking about becoming a talk show host, you know, she looks out in the landscape and this guy, Phil Donahue, literally has the market covered the most popular person on television. Imagine if she said to herself, you know what, that guy, Phil, he already did it. There's really no room for me. Talk show hosts are already covered. Or think about like Beyonce and Destiny's Child, if they looked around the kind of music landscape, right? And they're like, there's so many singers. We got to go find something else. Like there's not enough room for us. It's unconscionable. Like we're like, that's the silliest thing ever. Yet we play that same game with ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I don't see other, you know, uh, food bloggers or bloggers or health coaches as competition, but really just simple economics is that competition drives the market. The more cookbooks there are, the more cookbooks sell, right? Yes. People don't own one cookbook. If you own one cookbook, you most likely own 20 because you are a person who loves cookbooks, right? That's right. 
you should keep writing them. If somebody follows one fashion blogger, they probably follow a hundred fashion bloggers. Nobody follows just like one of something. It's, it's the more and the, the more of us there are, the better it is actually for everyone. That is a hundred percent right. I mean, when I look at my own library, like I'm addicted to books, right? Do I buy one productivity book? No. Never. Yeah. I read all of the productivity books in yeah. any genre. I'm like, give me, I'm like a little hungry hippo. And I'm happy to support these artists and these creators because I'm genuinely interested in all of this stuff. And so from the position of looking out at someone you know and admire and going like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that there's a, a whole company of people that I can get these different perspectives on. You have to then apply that lens to yourself and you have to know the world really does need that special gift that only you have because if you don't share it, the world will have lost something truly irreplaceable, mm -hmm. you. There really never has been or never will be another you. Your DNA is unique and your genius is one of a kind. And by you playing back and saying small and I don't want to and I don't know if anyone's going to like it, it's like, stop that. Yeah. Stop it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to end up on your deathbed, hopefully decades and decades and decades from now, looking back going like, why was I so silly? Yeah. Why didn't I just step up and be me and do the things that I really wanted to do while I still had the chance? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and side note about Chris Cart, I had never met Chris in person until this last year. We mm. share the same publisher, but obviously we have a lot of mutual friends and we see each other in some of the B-School emails every year. And I have to say, you know, Chris is a mega star in wellness and I admire her so much. And I walked into the, a meeting and she was there and she looked right at me and she came up to me and she was like, Elizabeth Ryder. And she gave me a hug and she was so genuinely warm and kind and lovely. And it was just such a great feeling to know. I didn't think that she would be anything else, but you yeah. never know when you've never met someone in person, you know, how of course. Be. So yeah, we have the, I know she's one of your best friends. We have the mutual admiration for Chris Cox. Yes. She, she is the OG wellness blogger to me. Love her. Um, so one thing that came up for me, so my personal, Maria, I'd love to know yours. Like I've been able to, you know, eradicate a lot of the self-sabotage, but something that still even comes up for me, even though my business does extraordinarily well, is that it's too expensive, right? Because every time you get to the next level in business, yes. right? it used to be my very first blog was on Blogger. And I paid a woman $100 to create me a header. It just had stock photos of food in it. Didn't even have a picture of me. Didn't anything, right? So I paid $100. And that was so much money then. And as my business has grown, we know this. And, and, and I, I know you've done this with your business. I've bootstrap financed my business, meaning I've never taken out a loan. I've never done that. It's like I make some money. Some of it goes to savings, you know, my personal expenses. And then I take the rest of it and I invest it to get to the next level. And as, you know, you continue to grow sometimes, you know, it used to feel like $100 was too expensive, right? Yeah. And now sometimes, you know, somebody will be like, well, that'll be $15,000. And I'm like, okay, or, or $100,000, right? And I'm like, what? Uh, so, you know, for one, these self-sabotaging beliefs, they come back, right? So we get rid of them and they kind of kick back in like you had mentioned. But what I start to hear a lot, it's too expensive. Mm. Well, so, okay, a few things. I think it's really good to be discerning in life, you know, and I will say as a business owner in a larger context, there's sometimes where let's say a vendor will come on or someone will give a proposal and I will legitimately be like, that is too expensive. Not that I can't afford it. It's that our values aren't aligned, meaning I do not believe that what they are offering is the value that they would like me to pay. So that does happen. Now let's look at it through the lens of, let's say an investment, for example, like in B-School, that's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, first of all, I would take a look at the landscape. So we've had people come through the program, over 55,000 graduates from over 600 industries, 148 different countries. There's a good number of people that already have advanced degrees like PhDs and MBAs. And this is something I've heard consistently that B-School is more actionable and creates better results than the degree that they paid over a hundred thousand dollars for. And I'll also put this in context you know, MBA programs like that or advanced business degrees often don't come with a money risk, uh, a risk-free money back guarantee, but B-School does. You can literally test drive the program. You can come in, you can do the work for, I think it's the first two weeks. We have all the details in writing and it's very transparent. And if you don't feel that it is the value that you wanted to get, if you actually do the work, turn in your completed coursework because we require that and we will give you 100% of your money back. But even more so, one more point I want to make, Elizabeth, is you know when you think about investing in yourself and your own capabilities, there's two stories I want to tell. One, 
I was in the community today and I literally saw this, this happened today, a brand new B-schooler in 2020. There was uh, one thing that she got from Start the Right Business, which is one of the programs that's available the moment that you register. She put it into action and she literally sealed the deal on a $500 per month client. So she's like, I've already made my investment back. Like this is already done. And I did one thing that Marie recommended. She's on fire. There was another woman who took something else from that same program. She was a little bit in an earlier stage, still kind of working out the foundations for her business. She took another piece from that same program. She went into a Facebook group where she was a member with different moms. She has 123 people who wrote to her interested in her new business. Business, this wow. thing that's not even so she's like I can't even believe this yeah, so incredible. that's that in terms of if you take action the potential to earn back that plus so much more but I want to tell one more quick story so there was a woman who did b-school years ago and she came into the program under the most devastating circumstances so she's a young mom two kids never went to college her husband was the breadwinner um, she was creating handmade ornaments around Christmas time and selling them on Etsy just for a little extra money for her family. Her husband was killed in a tragic motorcycle accident. And suddenly this new mom with two young kids had no way to support herself or her young family amid all this grief. Her family was encouraging her understandably to go get a job, to create some stability, to make sure that she could take care of everyone. She had this feeling in her heart that there was something around this little ornament thing that she was doing once a year at Christmas that was a hobby that her instinct told her it could be a business. She put herself into B-School. She did the work. With a handmade ornament business, she has grown into a seven-figure plus business. Wow. And here's what she told me. She said this in terms of it's too expensive, right? She said, Marie, do you want to know the most valuable thing outside of the fact that I've grown a seven-figure business? She said, if everything, God forbid, heaven forbid, was to be wiped away again, I am so clear based on the education I got in B-School and what I've been able to build that I could build it again from yes. scratch, yes. no questions asked. Yeah. So to think about can you say that for yourself in your life right now, anyone listening? Would you like that level of confidence, that level of freedom, that level of power to know that no matter what is happening in the world, the most devastating, the most tragic, the most difficult things that within you, you have confidence and capabilities. And by the way, a community that you're like, I know how to rise up again. I know how to rise up again. It may not be easy. It may not happen overnight, but I know I have what it takes to build this whole thing again. Yeah, so absolutely. Me, that's I priceless. I sent that out in an email. Um, well, that's, inc that's such an incredible story. I said in one of my emails, I think it was yesterday, I said, I know I don't have all the answers, but I know that I can learn anything. And that's I can right. what I've learned here and I can create anything I want. Because that's I can right. learn anything I want. You know, it's interesting. We teach all of these things in like in high school and college that are probably completely irrelevant to anybody's life. Really, they need to be taught B-school, right? Like, could you imagine if we taught every high schooler the B-school process? Like, oh my goodness. What would come out of the education system? It's just like, it's mind boggling, but it really is Marie. It is that, that ability to, no matter what happens, I have a fundamental strategy that I know I can implement with anything that I want to create. In any yes. Industry, whatever it is. That's right. And you know where to go back to, you know what questions to ask yourself. You know how to think things through. You know how to get in touch with people. You know how to communicate, how to message, how to package, how to position, how to inspire someone to say yes to something that's good for them and good for you. I mean, it's, it is freedom. So if that sounds like it's worth it to you, I think $2,000 in all honesty is the steal of a century. Also, that everyone gets lifetime access, that there's B-School mentor coaches, that every single year we're, we're looking at how can we enhance the customer experience and you never pay again. Absolutely. So uh, for me, I actually had a friend, Elizabeth, who said to me, and this is just like a week ago, he's like, why is this not 5,000 right now? Right. He's like, how? And I had right. someone else going like, the fact that you haven't raised the price because she wanted to take it years ago. 100%. And um, I said, hey, this is, I'm not making any promises for the future. Maybe we will. But up until this point, I've just followed my gut, followed my instinct. And I'm so committed to small business owners and to people who don't necessarily have all of those MBAs like I didn't. And I started my business in debt. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was so insecure. I certainly didn't have any of this knowledge. But now that I understand how things work and I've seen it work 
over a decade with so many different types of business owners, I'm like, hey, if, if, if you align with our values and this vibe and everything that we teach, it's like, you got to get your butt in the program. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and not to mention the payment plan, right? That you implemented yes. two years ago makes it so much easier and affordable for someone who's like, eh, cause it could be a stretch for someone to pay. Absolutely. You know, I suggest paying in full because it, you know, might save you a little bit and it's, it's, that's the way I roll. But if you can't, there's a payment plan that makes it so incredibly affordable. If anybody here live has a question, pop it in now. Cause we've only got another minute or two with Marie. The last uh, question that I have for you, Marie, if you could answer that I also you know, I think it's so deeply rooted in a lot of, um, of women's psyche that it's really difficult. I don't even, I think it takes a lot of us time to get to understand that this is even a belief that's really buried, but something that comes up a lot in my community is women really kind of getting to the root of why do I feel bad for making money? Ooh, so this is big. Why this is do, really why big. Why do we feel bad for making money? Well, Culturally speaking, if we look in a historical sense, for millennia, we've been told that we, our voices don't matter. We're not allowed to own property. We can't, some of us can't move without getting permission from a male. I mean, there are just, it is ancestral in terms of layers upon layers of silencing women, of oppressing women, of telling us that we don't matter, that we are nothing without a counterpart. We don't have access to power or finances in any sense. I mean, there were laws in the books, my goodness, as recent as the 1970s, where a woman couldn't access credit unless she had the permission of a man. I am like, are you, what is, so this is very recent. Yep. And so it's all, it's understandable that so many women have these deep conflicts around earning money. And I will also say in another sense, I think that women are also very attuned to the pain in the world. Mm -hmm. So there is something in us that we see so many people that don't have and you know, income inequality is growing and we see the pain through extraordinary extreme poverty. We see people that don't have access to the most basic of things that are required for human dignity in terms of clean running water and electricity and education and the most basic of healthcare and education. And so when we start to earn, I think it's almost impossible for us because we're such connected beings to, to, to not think about those things, but here's a reframe. For me, here's what I've discovered and the science backs this up. When women are financially empowered, everyone wins. Yeah. What we know from the research is that when women start to get money in their hands, what do they do most? They reinvest it in their families, in their family's healthcare, in their family's education, and in their communities. And when women do that, all of a sudden the communities become more healthy, they thrive, economies start to thrive. So there are all these downstream positive global outcomes that happen when women get money in their hands. Yes. So that's what we need to focus yeah. on. And it, you know, it's understandable, again, to, to have some of those deep conflicts. Some of them come from our family. Some of it comes from some of our religious upbringing. But again, a lot of it just comes from uh, extraordinary uh, heritage of a patriarchy and a society that tells us that we don't have the right to have that power and that wealth. And for yeah. me, um, you know, that's why we need to really embrace it. You know, I often say in B-School, and I'll say it here, I love money and yeah. I make no apologies for that. I love making it. I love sharing it with my team. I love the outflow going back into the world. I love the power. I love the independence it gives me. I love that it helps me vote with my dollars for companies that are doing the right thing. And it helps me to create the change that I hope to see in the world through using the power of that financial energy. Yes. Absolutely. You know, there are, I mean, multiple studies show that the most prosperous communities in the world are communities where women are empowered to, and have the legal ability to make their own money, own property, own their own business. It was actually, uh, Marie, what you said before, it was 1978. It wasn't until 1978 in the United States of America, you guys, United States of America, that a woman could not get a line of credit. You could not have your own credit card without a man's signature, dad, brother, stepbrother, cousin, so you think of a single woman, you're like, well, what if I don't have a husband? Doesn't matter. What if my dad has passed away? Doesn't matter. Go find a man. You can't get a credit card unless you have a man's signature. And that was 1978. That was the year my sister was born. I was born in 82. And I'm thinking like, that, my sister was alive when that happened. I was born four years later. 
and so it's interesting. Sometimes when people ask me like, Liz, why do you, why do you keep mentoring in B school? You know, you don't need to do that every year. Like, why do you keep growing? Why are you releasing new courses? Why do you keep doing all this? A part of me is like, because I can to show, <laughs> other women, to show yes. everyone else that they can do it too. Right. Yeah. We need well, I, other women doing this. We do. And I honestly know in my heart of hearts that we will have a more peaceful and just and equitable society, the more women have access to money and power. And money is a big piece of that. And to pretend that it's not is, I think, just being like an ostrich and sticking your head in the sand. It's just simply not true. Yeah. Amen, sister. We have one outstanding question before we go. Um, yeah. Can, how can B-School benefit healers and I'll even throw in coaches or any person yeah. services who do one-on-one -on -one work? Oh, this is great. So I started off as a one-on-one -on -one coach, so I'm very familiar with that. And we have so many B-Schoolers in our community who do a one-to-one -one type of services, massage therapists, healers, coaches, you name it. I think that if you want to have a thriving practice, whatever your practice is, B-School is actually optimal for you in terms of understanding who your ideal customers are so that you're working with people who are ideally suited for the change and the gifts and the value that you are here to give so that you're business becomes a joy to run because I'm sure anyone listening right now who has a one-to-one -one kind of practice, you know viscerally what happens when you attract the wrong clients. It's not good for anyone. Um, so we help you get that dialed in. Then in terms of your profit margins and how you position yourself in the marketplace so that you're earning those nice big profit margins so you can invest in your team and however you might want your business to grow. I think um, creating outstanding customer experiences, right? So whoever is coming into your practice, you're creating not just happy customers, but raving fan customers who will go out into the marketplace and sing your praises so that you have more business on autopilot. So there are just, those are just a few of the things that help make it ideal for you. But rest assured, we have so many people who have a one-to-one -one kind of practice in B-School, all kinds of different healers and coaches. So you'll be in great company and it's a perfect program for you. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, Crystal asked that question. So Crystal, I'll also say just, you know, for the sake of picking a one-on-one -on -one healing thing, like say Reiki in Seattle, I live in Seattle. You also want to know that when somebody Googles or tries to find your type of healing practice, that they can actually find you. One-on-one -on -one is great, but especially when you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to usually be wanting to continue to acquire customers over the year. So having your website dialed out in the right way so that when somebody is looking for your type of service in your area, that they find you. That you come up first and Absolutely. that what, how you're messaging it on your site, that you immediately create that level of connection, that level of trust, that level of, oh, this person sounds, oh, I'm going to go book an appointment right now, or I'm going to do whatever that next step is in the sales cycle so that you win that business. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you everyone for being here. Marie, thank you so much. I adore thank you. you. I honor I just, I, I love everything and I'm so grateful to you for everything that you've done for us. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having this here. And thanks everyone for listening today. And hopefully we will get an opportunity to work together in B-School. Bye yeah. everyone. Bye Marie.